Vision is introduction in the Bayesian approach. We consider parameters as random variables having a prior distribution. We continue from where we left off in section 4.4 and discuss three cases: estimating the parameters of a distribution, estimating the parameters of and uh, Gaussian processes. Introduction. Bayesian estimation is used when we have some prior information regarding a parameter. For example, before looking at a sample to estimate the mean mu of a distribution, we may have some prior belief that it is close to 2 between 1 and 3. Such prior beliefs are especially important when we have a small sample. In such a case, we are interested in combining what the data tells us namely the value calculated from the sample and our prior information. The maximum likelihood approach we discuss in section 4.2 treats a parameter as an unknown constant. In a Bayesian estimation, as we started discussing, in section 4.4, a parameter is treated as a random variable, which allows us to code in prior information we have using a prior probability distribution. For example, Knowing that mu is very likely to be between 1 and 3, we write p of mu in such a way that the bulk of the density lies in the interval between the closed interval of 1 and 3. Using Bayes' rule, we combine the prior and the likelihood and calculate the posterior probability distribution, uh, which, is, uh, on, which is known uh, by everyone, that is p of theta conditioning on x equals to p of theta conditioning times p of x conditioning on theta divided by p of x. Figure 14.1, the generative graphic home model. The arcs are in the directing of sampling. First we pick theta from p of theta and then we generate data by sampling from the probability of x to the t conditioning on theta. The new instance x and the past sample fancy x are independent given theta. This is uh, the uh, the assumption. If we do not know theta, they are dependent. We infer theta from given fancy x shown shaded using Bayer's rule, which inverts the direction to calculate the probability of theta conditioning x, which can then be used to fill in x. P of theta is the prior density. It is what we know regarding the possible values that theta may take before looking at the sample. P of x conditioning on theta is the sample likelihood. It tells us how likely our sample x, uh, the fancy x, is if the parameter of the distribution takes the value theta. For example, if uh, the instances in our sample are between 5 and 10, such a sample is likely uh, if mu is 7, but is less likely if mu is 3, and even less likely if mu is 1. P of x in the denominator is a normalizer to make sure that the posterior P of theta condition on x integrates to 1. It is called the posterior probability because it tells us how likely theta takes a certain value after looking at the sample. The Bayes rule takes the prior distribution, combines it with what the data reveals, and generates the posterior distribution. We then use this posterior distribution in our later inferences. For example, let us say that we have a past sample x drawn from some distribution with unknown parameter theta. We can then draw some uh, one more instance x, and we would like to calculate its probability distribution. We can visualize this as a graphical model, chapter 16, as shown in figure 14.1. What is depicted is a generative model which represents how the data is generated. We first pick theta from P of theta and use it to sample x, and also the new instance x the sample fancy x, and also the new instance x. We write the joint as that p of x fancy x theta equals to p of theta times p of fancy x conditioning on theta 
times p of x conditioning on theta, which shall we use in estimating the probability of a new instance x given the past sample fancy x? p of x conditioning on fancy s x is equals to p of x fancy x divided by p of fancy x, which is equals to the integrations of p of x fancy x theta d theta integrating theta divided by p of fancy x, which is equals to integrating of p of theta times p of fancy x conditioning on theta times p of x conditioning on theta d theta integrating theta divided by p of fancy x, which is equals to the integrations of p of theta conditioning on fancy x times p of x conditioning on theta, theta d theta and integrating theta. In calculating p of a theta conditioning on fancy x, Bayer's rule allows us to invert the direction of the arc and uh, do a diagnostic inference. The inferred theta distribution is then used to derive a prediction distribution for the new x. We use that our estimate is a weighted sum. Replace uh, the integration d theta by sigma theta. If theta is discrete valued of estimates for all possible values of theta weighted by how likely theta is given the sample fancy x. This is the full Bayesian treatment that may not be possible if the posterior is not easy to integrate. As we saw in section 4.4, in the case of the maxima of posterior MAP estimate, we use the mode of the posterior theta MAP maxima of posterior MAP, which is equals to uh, the argumentative uh, maximization of uh, P of theta conditioning on fancy x, where the maxima is taken among all possible theta, and P M of x conditioning on fancy x, P max of x conditioning on fancy x is equals to P of x conditioning on theta. MAP, that is uh, the maximum that we take earlier before. The MAP estimate corresponds to assuming that the posterior makes a very narrow peak around a single point, that is the mode, if the prior P of theta is uh, uniform over all possible theta, then the mode of the posterior P of theta conditioning on fancy x and the mode of the likelihood p of fancy x conditioning on theta are at the same point and the, the MAP estimate is equal to the maximum likelihood ML estimate. This is the ideal condition. This implies that using ML corresponds to assuming no prior distinction between different values of theta. Now let us now see how Bayesian estimation is used in different types of distributions and uh, applications.